For a challenge, I created the weakest man in Project Zomboid and survived for a hundred days. But now, the weather got much worse, the loot became scarcer, the zombie hordes tripled in numbers and there was about a million helicopters flying above. Can weak man survive another 100 days on his journey to become the strongest man alive? And can he raid the secret research facility in March Ridge and potentially find the cure? Relax, crack open a cold one and let's find out. At the dawn of day 101, it became instantly clear that Sean Bean was right. The winter has arrived and all the Starks have transformed into zombies. There was nobody to mend the wall and Weak Man certainly had his issues. Minus 15 degrees in October, huh? Looks like uh, Weak Man's gonna be developing some serious case of frozen balls this winter. So I brought in the antique oven I stole from the military and installed it in my kitchen. Then I replanted my farm with tomatoes, cabbages and potatoes because everyone knows crops fertilized with zombie blood grow beautifully at minus 20 degrees. The next morning, surprise surprise, it was still fucking cold, so I decided to test the new oven. You know civilization is ending when we are starting to burn books. It was nice and cozy when stood next to the thing, but cross a room and it felt like Antarctica once again. But for now I decided to learn metalworking in hopes of one day building propane fueled ovens that could heat the whole place. Alas, at the moment, heating the kitchen would have to do, so I chopped down a couple of trees and built not so sturdy walls to keep the place isolated. But of course, my carpentry work was sloppy, so I decided to go search for plaster on day 103. I drove to the storage lot, disposed of the natives and then went to search the place. I soon found a couple of bags, but then I realized my mistake. High level wooden walls, Oh shit. We're not gonna be able to use that yet. Of course, high level wooden walls meant carpentry level 7, and I was only at level 5. I still had one VHS tape at home that gave me a little bit of push, but to get to the next level I needed to train and that's what I set out to do on day 104, encouraged by a beautiful morning message. If you can hear this, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I drove to the wine trash county and began hitting their beds and closets with my hammer, thusly soaking up all the knowledge that went into construction of said furniture. Of course, the residents were too stoned to stop me from stealing their beds and crushing their kitchens, and finally I reached level 6 in carpentry. I then spent the evening reading the next carpentry book and fruitlessly shaking my fist at helicopters flying above. I spent the whole of day 105 reading, exercising and reading some more, until I was rudely interrupted by a helicopter dropping his juicy load right on top of me in the middle of the night. I finished the Carpentry 4 book in the morning, then I took a peek outside. Clearly, the heli attracted zeds like weak men's stinky balls attract flies, so I had to fight my way to the airdrop which was full of presents. Sugar and vinegar, box of jars, well now I'll be able to pickle some stuff. I then cleared out the remaining zombies around my base and loaded up the truck with as many supply boxes as it could carry. I put my new gift to work the next morning and I pickled 9 jars of cabbages for the long winter. Then I made my way back to the drop where I got a beautiful present full of toilet paper. If 2020 taught us anything, it taught us that the first thing that goes in pandemic is toilet paper, so lucky me. I also unboxed a lot of seeds and then spent the rest of the evening watering my freezing crops. On day 108, I woke up the banging downstairs, which is something that often happens in real life as well, and I realized that someone broke my back door, which is also something that often happens to your mom. I then took my truck deeper into the city to scavenge for garbage bags for more rain barrels, but with the increased zombie numbers, that proved a risky endeavor. On my return, I was greeted by some more banging. What are you doing here, lady? Fuck, get off of me, you dildo! It turned out my back door was infested by walkers, and as the day turned into night, they deployed the crawlers. Oh, you guys have broken through, haven't you? I cleared out the infestation, built my new rain collector and then pickled some fresh broccoli just to ruin the already shitty day some more. Adamant to make day 109 a less shitty day, I planted potatoes in the fresh winter soil. Then I went to chop 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 the trees around my home for materials and to prevent the undead bastards to ambush me with my pants down. I put the planks I got to good use in the evening and tidied up the hallway. The next day I chose violence against the establishment and because nothing was established anymore, I vented my 
Emma Rage on diner interior design. If Weakman dies, no one gets to enjoy pizza anymore. Alas, all my hard work resulted only a quarter level of XP needed to get to level 7 in carpentry. I decided to drive deeper into town on day 111 to find more wooden paraphernalia to dismantle, which was a stupid idea because Muldra was more and more infested with every passing day. Oh shit, there's more than I thought it's gonna be. Low ammo count and fog made me turn back home, but I promised to return. And return I did, with a shotgun. I spent the rest of the day explaining to the Walking Dead just exactly why they should have committed Sudoku to the brain instead of forcing me to ruin the beautiful pristine white landscape with abstract paintings made with their rotten guts. The next day I returned to the scene of the crime where only a few stragglers remained. I took my saw and hammer to the vid store shelves and they absolutely melted under the might of weak men's carpentry skills, which were still not level 7. I also found a fire extinguisher with an option to use it as a weapon and I had to try it out. Let's see what this is gonna do. I guess absolutely nothing. And that exercise proved exactly what my viewers long suspected about my IQ levels. When I returned the next day, I learned there were still some stiffs guarding the police station, but they couldn't stop me from breaking it apart. In the afternoon, I decided to clear out the ruined fence back at home and finally build something proper. Alright, let's build a proper wooden door, finally. As a reward, weak man woke up with a nasty cold the next morning, so I decided to turn on the heat and stay inside until it passed. Lots of sleep, a roaring fire and a good book made the sneezing and coughing surprisingly disappear by the evening, which makes weak men a tougher mother trucker than most of you watching this video. I decided to stay at home for another day and continued with repairs, and as is tradition, weak men tripped, fell and scratched his arm. But that was not all, my day was also rudely interrupted by another heli. Okay, they are all following the sound of the helicopter down there. Once again, I had to defend my home like an oil rich nation against the USA, and just as I almost won another helicopter showed up, probably sponsored by EA because it blessed me with yet another loot box. Oh yeah. I thought so. everybody and their mother heard this. On day 116, I finished the second front door and just like that, I finally had a proper garage. I also decided to fix the back door entrance just in case if some crawlers decided to slither back in just like the slimy little dildos they were. It felt like Siberia has arrived to Kentucky the next morning, but that couldn't stop me. I was determined to reach level 7 carpentry, which almost got me killed. Like a proper Balkan man when faced with adversity, I went to a bar instead. And like a proper Balkan man in a bar, I absolutely trash the place, just to finally get what I wanted. Hey, finally, carpentry level 7 unlocked. With walls fully upgraded at last, I was ready to apply plaster. But I forgot I needed a bucket and finding one took me the whole morning because the little shit was hiding in the last freaking container that I searched. I then mixed the plaster and Wickman magic the walls to look pristine and smooth like the bowls of that chick you ordered from Thailand. I then spent most of the day 119 reading the next nimble book, warm and cozy next to my fireplace. Alas, duty called, and I grabbed propane torches and a big tank and drove to the gas station to have them refilled. Oh yeah, filling up this bad boy is gonna hurt. At last, I was ready to level up my metalworking skill, which I needed to build a propane fueled furnace, and with a storm on the horizon, I had no time to lose. I drove south to the car wreck filled intersection and went to work. Each wreck consumed a full propane torch, so I had to jump back into my car after each two I dismantled for a refill from the big tank. In total, I had to take apart more than 20 cars which took me most of the day before I finally reached level 2 in metalworking. As a reward, I decided to bring back home a cool sports car which I had to fight for due to weak man's shitty driving skills. Oh, that's a fast car, you love to see it. Next day was a reading day, and I started right after my morning exercise. I spent the whole day learning metalworking too, and I just managed to finish the book late in the evening. I drove straight to the intersection the next morning and went back to work. I dismantled every single burned down wreck, which was enough to bring me to level 3 metalworking. But of course, I wanted more, so I stopped at the diner on my way back and dismantled the already trashed place. Alas, the XP I got from that was barely peanuts. I've got an idea to level up a bit by repairing my half way decent cars the next day. I could also beef them up with additional armor, but I did not have the necessary book for that. So I drove back to the intersection and filled my trailer with metal sheets, which was all that remained from the racks. Let's do some on C2 repairs over here. 
I continued with repairs after I got back home, fixing the big truck and my Humvee as well. I then went to the bookstore on day 124, in hopes of finding that missing magazine. Being able to armor my cars would be a huge boon, but while I did find some useful books there, I found no trace of the magazine I was after. The day was not a complete waste though, as the zombies prowling around the library brought Weakman's kill count to 3000. I had a vague notion there were more car wrecks on the other side of Moldra, so on day 125 I took a ride down the heavily infested streets. I stubbornly fought for every burned down shell of a car I could dismantle. And even though Zeds tried their best to make my day a pain, I was stubborn like that ex of yours who took a shit on the floor right next to the toilet just because you left the seat up again. Oh, let's go. I finally found it. I spent the rest of the day there and even though Weakman was almost dead tired, I dismantled every single wreck and the last one finally brought me to level 4 metalworking. I gathered all the resources the next day and finally began assembling the propane furnace. Whoa, what are these noises this thing is making? Holy shit, that sounds like my ass. It turned out I had no idea how to actually use the thing. I couldn't turn it on, I couldn't refill it from a propane tank, I couldn't even do it at a gas station and after being confused for a while I turned to Google. Well, Reddit told me that this is just for crafting purposes and not for actual heating, so all this time Wasted. Yes, I never actually checked what the damn thing was used for and like a silly billy, I got excited when I saw it in the crafting menu. But if you thought that was the extent of my stupidity, think again. Day 127 was very foggy so I decided to stay indoors and do some exercise and reading. But then I realized all those jars of pickled veggies were beginning to rot because I forgot to cook them. That is a stupidity like I've never seen before. Luckily, some survived, but I lost a lot of my winter food supply there. I still wanted to find that car magazine, and I knew it could spawn on a metal worker, mechanic and other blue collar zombies. Alas, I wasn't sure where to find a high concentration of sad zombies, so I decided to visit McCoy's. I was chased by a friendly heli all the way there, and when I arrived, the actual worker zeds were very rare, which tells you a lot about the state of today's society, where everyone wants to be an influencer or suck dicks for money on OnlyFans, and no one wants to do the real hard work anymore, building a better tomorrow with their bare hands, and being forcefully retired at the age of 43 because of continuous back pain, hearing loss, and other work-related injuries, so they can live the rest of their short, miserable life high on prescription drugs. But not only did the trip to McCoy's bring me new revelations, I also found an annotated map, and I drove to the Mark house the next day. I used a silent shotgun. Dude, the sound of this is so cool. And I discreetly dispatched the zombies from the area. Unfortunately, the house only had one box of shotgun shells, which was less than what I used to clear the area. Then in the evening, I walked to the police station where I hotwired a police truck, which was not a modded vehicle and I realized I could actually armor it up. Oh yes, look at this. This is gonna be awesome. I drove to the intersection where I grabbed a ton of metal bars and pipes, which I knew I needed to make my car so protected it could actually be used in a Durex commercial. But before I could begin working on the car, I needed to read the next metal working book. If I had a mechanics one, I'd read that too, alas. Then my study was rudely interrupted in the afternoon by a helicopter once again. Those metal birds were even more persistent than my viewers asking when's the next Kenshi video. On day 132, I finally got weak men's fitness level to 6. And and then I continued to read into the afternoon to finish the book. The weather outside wasn't the best. It is very fucking foggy out here, but I see some zombies down there. But that didn't stop me. Luckily, one of my mechanics training cars was still working, so I drove that one outside and fit my new car back in. Because I wanted to work on it in a safe enclosed area. I banged and welded and slowly it turned into something straight out of Mad Max, if weak man was a chrome huffing wild eyed maniac. Instead, he drove slowly and carefully like a little turd back to the intersection because he was missing the materials for one final addition. You know what? This car looks pretty fucking awesome now. With a proper armored car now, I was ready to follow my goal and go exploring towards March Ridge and the secret facility there. But first, I needed to fix my ever-present weight loss issue and my solution was to go fishing. Of course, weak men knew nothing about fishing but that didn't stop me. I made my way to a secluded pond nearby, cleared out the area and began building a fishing shack. Oh. The water is gone. <laughs> It's not what I wanted to do. Clearly, my plans needed adapting. So I returned the next day with a sledgehammer. Oh, this is turned into water. Oh, but I can walk on it. 
Oh, for fuck's sake. And then I changed my plans once again and built the fence box fence in hopes it would protect me from the passing Zeds. I then returned back home to read the fishing book which I finished deep in the night. All I needed now was a fishing rod and I learned how to make one by watching a VHS tape. I also found a couple of rods and fishing nets at the gun store and after a quick nap I was ready to go fishing. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's a helicopter again. So instead I did a perimeter check and some light reading until another EA loot box dropped right behind my house and a all hell broke loose. I fought the invasive species well into the night until I was sure they were invasive no more. On day 137 I was finally ready to go fishing. I also brought a couple of traps with me but forgot to bring any bait. I set my fish nets and then began to fish. It took me the whole day and then it finally happened. Hey let's go we caught a small crappy. It's a crap one. So four days after deciding to start fishing, I had one whole tiny little shit of a fish. Great success, but at least the nets were full of little bait fishes so I grabbed those for future use. I cooked my first fish stir fry the next morning, then I drove back to the pond. I added some potatoes as bait to the traps, then I began fishing, which was naturally interrupted by yet another helicopter. I was beginning to think Weakman was in some kind of reality TV show broadcasted for your amusement on YouTube, but that just sounds ridiculous. Day was a good day. I caught a lot of shoes, but also we got this huge pike and a couple of smaller ones. The big pike was truly a monster, and my food supplies really began stocking up, especially when I harvested potatoes, cabbages, and tomatoes the next day. Enough food to feed an army, but Weakman was alone. But you don't have to be, because you can play Project Zomboid with me and the rest of my community on my own PC server, sponsored by Shockbite. Jump on my Discord to get the details on how you can join, or visit Shockbite if you want your own server and with a promo code COCO you can get 25% off for the first month. Links down below. On day 140 I was back at the pond where a nice surprise awaited me. Oh we got a full on rabbit! Holy shit, let's go! With two rabbits and another pike that I caught, Weakman was now ready to start blasting once again. And so I did the next day. I grabbed my shotgun and drove to the school because I wanted to see if I could find some books. Zombies poured out of every hole like shit out of tourists eating Eastern European street food for the first time without drinking at least half of a bottle of vodka. But contrary to his name, Weakman was made of sturdier stuff. And while he was still full on panicked, he cleared the streets and got what he wanted. Oh, let's fucking go, mechanics, volume 3, that's what we needed. I returned the next day to continue looting the nearby area, and because I'm a real Slavic man, I prioritized the liquor store first, before driving back home to do some chores around the house. On day 143, I drove back to the pond. Oh man, in another life, a weak man would be hitting on dummy thick furries right now, instead he's driving to this wilderness full of rotten dead. And while I contemplated the cruel injustice of this furryless life, Weakman reached level 2 in fishing by catching, you heard it right, shoes and socks. Next I decided to begin scouting the nearby towns, and shortly after I hit the road, this happened. Holy shit, that is, what the fuck is this? Whoa, 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 whoa. That was on the road to Rosewood, and a little further down the line I also found a cool survivor zombie. The town itself was pretty heavily populated though, but I was sure a little bit of fire could make it a much cozier place. I bobbed and weaved my way through the heavily infested road back home, and then I turned south towards Marchridge on the next day. While that city was also full of zombies, at least the drive there wasn't as bad as the previous day, and I was confident I could make a dent through the tightly packed streets. Ooh, there's a fresh topfung over here. Let's not go there. On my way back, I stopped at the town entrance just to clear a few guardians there. Then I returned back home to Scheme. And by Scheme, I mean I read the trapping book the whole morning, before going back to the pond to fish in the evening and check on the, unfortunately, empty traps. I started the day 147 with rooftop farming, then continued by learning more about fishing and trapping via books, which turned into a nice, cozy evening until I got interrupted by a heli once again. The mostly of course, it attracted Zeds, but it was nothing a tired weak man couldn't handle. But something he couldn't handle was a road. Oh my god, how did I do that? <laughs> No! Luckily, there was another truck there that I could hotwire and use it to flip my car. Without any further issues, I made my way to March Ridge, and then I started blasting. Even though my shotgun was silenced, the zombies encircled me from all sides, and there were some sketchy moments, but once again, weak men prevailed. Oh, check this survivor. Oh, look at this! 
That's a cloak. Although he was that tired, I pushed to my target destination, a VHS store that was unfortunately empty. I woke up to the sound of another helicopter the next day, so I decided to stay at home to read and relax. But surprise surprise, another heli showed up in the afternoon, which meant I had to deal with a home invasion the next morning. My plan after that was to go check on my traps, but what followed was an intense shootout throughout the whole forest, which somehow got extremely infested in the couple of days I've not visited. Like Twitch streamers when they see an opportunity to say something misogynistic, they jumped on the opportunity to bite my ass. But my ass was not for biting, even though I had to deal with another big crowd when I returned back home for the night. I had a new sidearm ready to be tested the next morning. The sound of this is so fucking cool. Then I rebuilt what the Zeds have ruined the previous day. After that, I spent the day reading electrical book because I needed the skill at level 3 before I was confident in moving to March Ridge, because that was the requirement to reinstall electrical ovens. I went into the town to dismantle whatever I could find and what I mostly found was a ton of zombies all over the place. No wonder every time there's a helicopter Helicopter, I get a bunch of these bastards back at my home. While the zombies provided me with digital watches to tear apart, they just never stopped coming. And when Weakman was already dead tired, a helicopter showed up as well to complicate things even more. I had to fight my way home, which was already under assault by the rotting dead forces, who brought my kill count to over 4,000. The next day was extremely foggy, so I decided to stay safely at home. I did some exercises, which was a skill I've been neglecting lately, and then I spent most of the day reading a book. Well, besides killing a couple more Zeds. I decided to brave the streets of Muldra again on day 154. Alas, the roads were even worse than before. Oh my god, what the fuck is this? There's so many! So then I became the garbage man, cleaner of roads. All the trash that civilization left behind was there for me to dispose of. And if the microplastic swimming in our bodies tells us one thing, it tells us that civilization is an outstanding machine for producing trash. I fought throughout the snowstormy day and when I finally returned back home in the evening, a present awaited me. Oh, what the fuck is this? Jesus. What are you all doing here? With so many zombies in the vicinity of my home, I had to do something about it. So I uninstalled the silencer from my shotgun, grabbed the molotov and went to work. A ball of fire, a couple of hundred bodies strong was soon formed and I did everything I could to keep them occupied. Okay, okay, we got this, we got this. Just need to bob and weave. Just bob and weave and we're good. Around 400 Zeds died a fiery demise on that day and the road into town was once again a little more clear. And a good thing I cleared them because... You gotta be fucking kidding me man, how many helicopters could there be? Those zombies would be knocking on my doors if it weren't for my work the previous day, so I happily stayed inside on day 156 to read and work on the rooftop farm. As I went to refuel my car in the morning, I instantly realized the 400 zombies I fried were only a drop in the bucket called Modra. So I took a ride further up the road and learned that indeed there were still plenty of them kicking around. <laughs> oh, there's so many coming from the trees, fuck! But no matter how much they kicked, the poor, exhausted and panicked weak men kicked back until the road looked like something I'd paint after sniffing some high-grade oxy. Across 5,000 kills on that road and just as I turned back home, guess what? A heli showed up. So I decided to stay at home the next day. I repaired my generator for some extra electrical XP, then I exercised and read the final aiming book, which knowledge I put to good use when I returned to the Muldra Highway the next day. It didn't seem like I made a dent in the zombie population at all, but after I took down another 150 or so, I finally had a moment of peace to dismantle some electrical appliances, which at long last got me to level 3. I just wanted to take it easy the next day and prepare for my departure to March Ridge, but that got postponed because, you know what, I'm not even gonna mention what flew overhead once again. After that, one by one, the armies of the Rotten Dead arrived until my home was under siege and what awaited behind my house felt like a deja Oh my god, this is behind my house? Look at this! And another thing that felt like a deja vu was what I heard on the radio late at night. But I was now ready to assault March Ridge. I grabbed some food and ammo, but then I realized my holster went missing overnight. So I spent that morning scavenging the nearby corpses in hopes of finding one, but no luck. I decided to visit the police station next, which was naturally visited by a helicopter. I dispatched the horde and when I finally found a holster, this happened. Like seriously, you gotta be kidding me. There's another fucking helicopter. What is going on in this city? Why is there so many of them? 
I escaped back home, which was already under siege, but there was little I could do about it. What followed were days of complete and utter madness. I cleared out the visitors in the morning, but when I tried to repair what they've broken, a heavy fog set in, which made weak men trip on the fence again. They kept on pouring from the fog to the point I had to pull back in hopes it would be clearer in the afternoon, which it wasn't. But late at night, my generator ran out of juice and I had no gas to refuel it. For fuck's sake! What else can go wrong? Frustrated, I tried to make a run to the gas station, but the zombie numbers and low visibility forced me to return home like a defeated little puppy. But I was ready the next morning, and with a rooftop advantage, I sniped the approaching hordes like a proper cowboy loaded up on beer and white supremacy ideas. I fought them all the way to the gas station, and refueling my generator felt like a biggest win in a long time. Weak men also reached level 9 in aiming after clearing out even more zombies, and I felt like alas, there would be a moment of peace. But day 164 said, fuck peace. No! No, 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 <laughs> no, fuck no. Someone please count how many helicopters showed up in this video because I lost count already. I also lost count how many times there was a horde plastered on my back wall and how many times they broke down my defenses. Weak men killed a thousand zombies in just those last four days of madness, reaching over 6,000 kills. There is so many corpses over here. Exhausted from all that fighting, I just wanted to chill on day 165. I read a book and did some farming, I repaired my gun, exercised and then read some more. So I would get ready for action. Yes, finally it was time to assault March Ridge and when I arrived… No way! No fucking way. Clearly, Project Zomboid hates weak men and wants him to die a painful death. If the Airborne Society, which were clearly the last survivors on Earth, wanted me dead, then so be it. But if they thought I would go down meekly like a I don't want to go outside cause people scare me millennial, then they were fucking wrong. I didn't have to pull back though, because all of this fighting made weak men, well, Week. But I returned the next day to the body filled streets, and because for once there was no heli, I actually managed to decently clear the neighborhood. I then snuck into the house I targeted and made sure the top floor was secure. With a home away from home semi established, my first night in Marchridge was peaceful, if we ignore yet another helicopter. But for once, the heli actually did its job by masterfully baiting most of the zombies away. That meant I could begin shaping this house into something more usable. I chopped down a few trees and built two ladders leading upstairs. In the afternoon, Afternoon, I drove back to Muldra to load the truck with all the necessities for a prolonged stay in Martridge. On day 169, nice, I drove to the storage lots nearby, because I was sure I could find a generator there. I established a killing ground inside, yelling you shall not pass at zombies coming at me. With generator in tow, I was now totally ready to stay out of town for a while. And so I hit the roads towards my new home the next day, after filling up all the extra gas cans I could find. Zombies awaited me in Martridge. Cannot build a house without cracking some omelets or something. But it was nothing I couldn't handle. I installed a generator, then I brought an oven and a fridge upstairs to build my new kitchen. But of course, I did forget something, a sledgehammer. And so I drove back to Muldra once again the next day, after stashing all the supplies I brought with me. Good thing the roads were clear. Bob and weave, just bob and weave. But that little trip wasted my whole day. The next morning, I started with interior decoration. Then I went outside to redecorate the streets as well. I'm sorry guys, you're right to assembly has been cancelled, please disperse right now. For some reason, zombies didn't like my message, but that didn't stop me from continuing my work throughout the day. On day 173, I caught a bunch of creeps fornicating in my spare closet, but I shouldn't be surprised, this was America after all. I then built a rooftop access so I could construct a rain collector for clean water supply. I also took down the walls leading onto my outside platforms so I could build doors and stop using the windows to get inside like a fat thief dressed as Santa. I decided to explore the neighborhood the next day, and by that I mean I scavenged through the kitchens hoping to steal some employees breast milk like a high rank blizzard executive, but no luck. I did find a survivor house though which was full to the brim of various high grade weapons. I then noticed the zombies trapped by the fence behind my house were not so stupid after all. These guys know how to get around. I woke up to a proper snowstorm the next morning, accompanied by a horrific wind chill. So I decided to stay inside and steal all the clothing from the corpses to learn more about tailoring. I reached level 2 in the afternoon, then began reading the next book, which I finished the following day. It's a very stormy weather outside still. 
Still horrific wind chill. So that meant another day spent inside. I exercised and worked on my tailoring until I reached level 3 in the evening. Happy New Year, you filthy animal! And indeed, it was a whole new year. But Weakman felt alone and empty inside. Empty like my heart when I see only 7% of you watching this video are actually subscribed. But with a new year came calmer weather, so I decided to finally scout the hidden research facility. If we start shooting in the back, the zombies won't know how to get to us. I circle around it, scouting for weak points until I had a good idea how to approach it. On day 178, I was finally ready. I parked my car behind the facility where I thought it would be a good staging area. My car and shotgun blast attracted the zombies out of the building and to a better killing ground. Let's fucking go, we're aiming level 10 now. Holy shit. I cleared the whole back area, fighting until the negative moodles began stacking up, and then I retired for the day when Weakman's kill count crossed 7000. Of course, I returned the next day to continue my work. The zombie numbers were now much lower, which gave me the opportunity to explore indoors. Naturally, this wouldn't be a proper research facility without creepy ass cells full of bladed medical apparatuses. Apparatus? I... Whatever. You get the idea. The place was shady as fuck. On day 180, I returned for one final final time, cleared the zeds around the entrance and then broke into the guardhouse. I stole their guns and ammo and then did the same with the armory in the main building. Lastly, I explored the upstairs area, which was clearly a residency for those who required soft white walls, which is the comfort I crave every time I finish one of these videos. But at this point, a heavy snowstorm severely obstructed my vision, which almost cost weak man his life. Fucking hell. Bitch almost got me. You'd think, since I found no cure at the facility, I would be now done with Marchridge. You'd be right, well, almost. There was a library in a nearby community center, and while the darkness in the hallways inside almost scared weak men away, I pushed forward for the ultimate prize. Oh, let's go, advanced models! Fuck yes! In the evening, I loaded up my car with all the valuables I found in this town, and then I bid Marchridge goodbye. It was a shame to leave so many corpses behind, just imagine the amount of kidneys weak men could sell on the black market. If there was a black market anymore, maybe the Airborne Society had one, but the flying bastards have been quiet for the last few days. After a long ride in the not-so-pleasant weather, it was nice to see ye olde Muldra again. Home sweet home. There was a lot to do around the house, because it fell to disrepair in my absence. I started with my rooftop farm, I removed all the rotting and wilting crops and then replanted them all in the freshly broken soil. Not only did I water them, I also fertilized them with Weakman's unique gamer juice. And speaking of gamer juice, Weakman was sweating it throughout the whole day 184, as I pushed him through rigorous exercise and reading routines. You see, my next goal awaited, Louisville. But to be ready for it, I needed my strength and fitness as high as possible. My metal working skill at level 6 for extra car protection and my tailoring as high as possible for weak men's body protection. And so, on day 185, I threw myself hard at work to accomplish my goals. I began the day with exercise, then I went downstairs to greet the friendly neighborhood zombies. Look, if you're gonna trespass on my territory, you're gonna get shot like a Jamaican skateboarder doing 360s on my front lawn. Not that I have a lawn, I just like shooting stuff. Gotta clean all the cum-covered rags. After cleaning the rags, I trained tailoring until I reached level 4 in the evening. The next day, was not much different. I exercised, then I shot some neighbors, and then I stole their clothes. Basically, a normal day in the life of an average American citizen. If we remove the exercise part, can't have any of that nonsense healthy living in the USA. I then studied the next tailoring book until late at night. Your little baby had a nightmare, don't worry, we're gonna give you beer now and you're gonna be much better and you're gonna be able to sleep. There you go. And guess what I did the next morning? I exercised. Not that it did much for my XP levels. But then I switched things up. I trained tailoring first and then I went to shoot at neighborhood zombies. Late at night, when the negative moodles began stacking up high, my training finally paid off and I hit level 5. I was out of comrades on day 188, so I had to go on a short trip. Good thing there's always new comrag delivery services out here. Just like Romanian immigrants, there was always more zombies out there 
there. And after I successfully liberated them of their clothes, I was able to go back home to train. Alas, at this level, the training process started to take a while, and I only managed a third of a level before it was bedtime for weak men. But I craved action, so I decided to go on an adventure next. I draw east towards Bedford, dismantling car racks along the way. Welcome to Bedford Falls. Oh, look at all those beautiful racks. Of course, by the time I arrived to my destination, weak men was already dead tired. But that didn't stop me. I showed the zombies the meaning of love in a Balkan way. Then I began dismantling car racks, always looking over my shoulder. It was stressful work, but it needed doing. So I continued the next day. Oh, this is the shopping dead. I've been at the grocery store. For each rack I dismantled, a group of zombies popped up that required re-education. I fought and welded, then fought and welded some more, thinking that each rack might be my last. Doing this is fucking dangerous. You never know when there's gonna be a zombie right behind you and you can't look. But when I pushed deeper like the dwarves who dug Moria, I unleashed hell. I was basically surrounded, dead tired and quickly running out of shotgun ammo. I disengaged for a quick nap, then snuck back out at night to finish the last few wrecks. At midnight, I escaped the town and on the road ran into the ultimate prize. Is that a katana or are you just happy to see me? I was able to relax the next day, beginning with exercise in the morning and then I burned my lunch. To improve my day and cheer me up, old friends arrived in the evening. It's been a while, airborne society, it's been a while, but the bastards have returned. I decided to deal with that issue the next day and spend the rest of the evening training weak men's tailoring skills. At risk of repeating myself, the next morning I started blasting. Good thing I popped them pills so I can now shoot them like a proper cowboy. There were enough zombies in and around my home to keep me occupied for the whole day. But if you think weak man wasn't ready, you were wrong. You see, while you were chasing hot chicks in college, he studied the shotgun. While you were yelling dicks out for Harambe, he was pondering his orb. So no, zombies stood no chance against him and as a final act of humiliation, he stripped them all naked in the end. A couple groups yet to remain the following day, so I cleared them out on my way to refuel the generator which was in need of maintenance as well. The first batch of new crops was also ready and I gathered a couple of fresh carrots. Then I went all in on tailoring and pushed weak men to the edge of exhaustion till he finally hit level 6 at 2.30 in the morning. While I could have read the next book, I opted to go visit the pond instead. Fucking hell, where the fuck did you come from? There were a couple of zeds there and two of my traps had been ruined, which was no real surprise since I've been away for quite a while. I spent the whole day fishing, which turned out pretty well. Three socks, that's amazing, and uh, three shoes, but he also caught a big pike and a small pie. I then returned back home and began reading the next tailoring book, which I continued to read the next morning after my daily exercise. Let's do some proper exercise, or did somebody say extra fries? I would love some extra fries right now. Alas, I did not finish the book. Instead, I grabbed all of my leather patches and began applying them to my clothing. Weak man's gear wasn't very protective. It was more suitable for winter. But when I was done, he was layered like a radioactive butterfly inside a 5G tower. Then I filled up the big propane tank at the gas station and grabbed a sweet 5.56 rifle. If you wonder why I've done all that, well, it was time for another adventure. I drove north towards Dixie, which is also a brand of portable toilets where I live, so that tells you a lot about the state of the town. But I wasn't interested in shit, I wanted the racks. But of course, I had to fight for them. Holy shit, this feels good, I love this rifle. I spent the whole day there, shooting zombies, dismantling racks, shooting some more zombies, dismantling some more racks, and so on, until at midnight, dead tired, I finally took apart the last hunk of burned metal, reaching level 5 metalworking. But I still needed one more level for full vehicle upgrades, although I could do almost everything already. Alas, day 197 wasn't the day for all that. First, I replanted the carrots, and then I watered my rooftop farm. Ah yes, here we go again. How about another helicopter? We haven't seen one in a long time, have we? Naturally, the Airborne Society brought a party with them and I had to get rid of the rowdy mother truckers. Sneaky beaky like. She's never gonna see me coming. Or he, you know, I don't judge. I ended the day with the last VHS tape I owned, then continued to read the tailoring book. On day 198, I welded a new bull bar to one of my cars to see how much metalworking XP I get. And that's gonna be... nothing? Oh. 
Great. Which meant I needed more racks. But first, I took a ride to the zombie infested intersection, where I grabbed some plates, pipes and bars. All the things I needed to weld a roof rack to my trailer. It really surprised me I was able to do that, but I was glad for extra storage. The next day, I went towards Dixie Town again. Holy balls on a chopstick, the roads are full these days, dude. There were more racks waiting for me there, but the highway was full to the brain with the walking dead, and they made sure I knew I was welcome like capitalism in China. But I wasn't there to make friends, I was there to turn burned down car husks into big fat stacks of XP. But as is tradition, there were more zombies than there were racks. This is the last rack that I can dismantle and we barely got not even a third up to level 6, this is gonna take a while. And while weak man was ridiculously tired, I pushed onwards. I scouted the car stop up ahead, then decided to take the back roads on my way home. There was a lot of forest and very little zombies and while I had the opportunity to explore a suspiciously empty warehouse on the way, I decided to play it smart and follow the long road home. And then day 200 was here and I decided to celebrate it with a blast. I drove to town, grabbed my rifle and you guessed it, started blasting. All I have to do is stand in one spot and then get ambushed. <laughs> At first, it was pretty empty, but then more and more zombies poured out of the trees like crypto bros when you dare shit talk NFTs on Twitter. Ho <laughs> ho let's go, that's another katana, boys. 200 Zeds failed to celebrate day 200, and that katana was a cherry on the top. Weak man has come a long way since his first 100. His kill count was over 8000 now, his skills proved that he was weak no more, but if he was to show that he truly is worthy of the strongman title one day, there was still so much to do. His next goal, 300 days and Louisville.